Good afternoon. This is the Townsend Finance Committee um, meeting on Tuesday, September 17th. We'll call the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Um, as we have remote members, uh, roll call attendance, please. Gerald Mazakis. Andrea Wood. Sam Grant. And Don Hayes. With that, we have four of our five members at this point, so we have a quorum, so we are good to go. Um, the, this meeting is being played live on Channel 9 and recorded and will be replayed on Channel 9 in the future and is also available on the Townsend YouTube channel. Um, the next uh, 1.4 editions of deletions, um, not known to the chair when posted, um, we did receive some correspondence, so I am adding in the work session section, I'm adding 2.7 to go over the correspondence just so we are um, we have it. Okay. Um, sorry. Yeah. And my mouse wanted to scroll. There we go. Um, so. First item in the work session is reviewing the meeting minutes. Um, I don't have them open. Um, do we? Does did anybody review review the meeting minutes, or do we need to do we need to call them up, review them um, online? With silence, I guess. Um, call them up. Okay, so the first one is July 23rd. Okay, do we want to take the time, read them, read them here? Um, sorry, I didn't share, I thought I had. Okay, so now I am sharing the meeting minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, um, July 23rd, we probably did already because this is okay. where we, yeah, sorry, that's, uh, we had already approved these minutes um, and this it was in my inbox again because um, we had Sam Grant was missing from the initial attendance and so now these these are updated with that change so these will be submitted to town clerk as completed uh, next one is August 5th Okay, so I'm just checking my calendar because I think August yeah, because it was four o'clock. That was that was didn't we did we big Monday meeting? Yeah. Yeah. So that that's why the time is a little, little off. Um, I thought we didn't approve the minutes. Um. Do you think we approved? I think we did. On the fifth also? Okay. Because this, this was going through our uh, recommendation sheets. That's why mm -hmm. we. Okay. And last one would be the 13th of August, which was our last meeting. This was. Again, we, we were reviewing the uh, special town meeting articles. Mm -hmm. uh, just
I was going to say, do we want me to be the teleprompter? Can you keep up? Okay, and these were the ones that we get questions on from the prior week. Um, so these these are the motions we made and went on our recommendation sheet that was presented at at the special town meeting. Motion. Um, yeah, I would have. Okay. I make a motion to approve August thirteenth minutes. Second. Okay, thank you, Andrea. Um, any further discussion? None being heard. Our roll call vote, please. General Mazik is upstate. I wasn't here. Okay. Andrea Wood, yes. Yeah. Sam, you. With us, Sam, you're on mute. Okay, um, Don Hayes is yes, approved. Um, okay, um, no, because we have a, uh, we have, we still have the quorum with the three because it's five. Yeah, right, yeah. And so the, the vote is two, two, four, one abstain. Uh -huh. So that's still a majority. We, okay. we will try to get Sam to ch check in. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll go back. Okay. And, I'll jump back to. Um, okay, item two is the finance committee bylaw review. Um, we had put this onto our list of tasks that we wanted to do this summer um, earlier before the special town meeting and, and all the work we did there. We had a sign that we were going to look at the, we we're going to divide it since there's only six divided into, into half and do one to three. So I just want to bring it up again. Um, I don't, I haven't heard any input or changes. So um, we'll bring that into our next meeting to review um, the action we have. We have as a, as, as a committee to review our bylaws um, and, and take next, next meeting we'll do one to three and then the following meeting we'll do the four to six and um, see if we can make any recommendations to the bylaw committee and get them, them submitted as as they make their changes to the bylaws. Um, as we're talking about bylaws, I will mention we're looking at a little bit of a conflict in the bylaws right now. There's two sections um, that talk about appointing members. Um, one is um, with um, in in two different ones ones on the charter side ones in the bylaw side so we will, and they're not consistent about how a replacement member would be appointed um, so we want to make sure that we have um, a consistent or at least um, do they count differ counts. that much about as to who as to who, who does the appointing yes it, it's kind of like one is the back back to town moderator and the other is the town committee. They, 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 it, it's one the charter one in, says moderator. What the it charter says be. moderator for the remainder of the term. Right. And within the bylaws, it says the committee for the remainder of the year to be appointed by. Meaning what committee? Meaning our uh, committee? Our committee can, can receive a volunteer request and, and vote and appoint a member. But it's only good for the re remainder of, of the, the term of the of the year, not the term the, of the year. Right. You know, so um, we have two openings. One ends in 2025, so that's not an issue. But the one that ends in 2026, um, which was Josh's position, um, we would 
the way it reads, we could appoint somebody until 2025 and then the moderator would, would need to approve. So we can, if we skip it and get the moderator to, to appoint it, it, it's kind of like we want to make sure there's no issues as we do it and, and that the person we're appointing knows exactly what their term is going to be. Mr. Chair, well, I, yes. thought, I yeah. thought that when John appointed, we get letters that say what our term is going to. We do, but generally that's after our term has expired. <laughs> and <laughs> and so cool. these these are, and that's that's where a little bit of the conflict is. If, if we have John appoint, one would be till the end of 2025 and one would be 2026. So that, that's our other option is just speak with John and have him write the appointment letters. Then, then there's no question. I don't know if they they conflict necessarily. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think they're for two different purposes, and I think the charter says this is how people get appointed. Mm -hmm. But the bylaw is like um, more specific mm -hmm. to if there's a vacancy in the middle, right. you yeah. know. So mm -hmm. that's not necessarily a conflict. Right. But I would ask town council. Yeah, uh, that's, to, that's, that's where I think we need to go. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. And so. we have a new charter that's supposedly going to be signed while the house is out of session. Is, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See, the, see, next, yeah. the next few weeks. Right. Yeah. See if that has. I don't think it, okay. I don't think we changed anything mm. in that. Okay. Thank you. So. Um, right now, we don't know when the meeting is because that's later on. We're setting the, the next meeting. So, for us, you mean? For, hmm? for, for us? For us. Yeah, the Finance Committee, we don't have. How many openings do you have now? Right now, we have two openings. One that is in FY. The end, um, it ends once. It was 25, 25 or something. So um, it's done? Um, I think it's done. I, it will be done in at, at the end of town meeting, the next annual okay, town meeting. So it's still. It's, it's, yeah, it's, that one is current and would run through that and need to be reappointed um, for FY26. And then the other one run, runs through um, FY26 and we have to get appointed at the um, in the town meeting in coming 26. So we, we, um, so that's, that's our little, little piece on the bylaws and, and overlap into the finance committee membership. So we, we do have the two opening. Um, we're looking and follow, you know, trying to follow up. Um, and we have received um, we've received one um, one maybe in maybe two um, um, volunteer forms. So we'll we'll take a look at them, invite them to our next meeting, um, and then find out and give them a little little bit of what our schedule is, especially mm -hmm. as we get to. The, the end of the budget season. Well, that's what I'm saying. With the, when we the start the budget, it's, right. um, yeah, we we you know we they may not necessarily understand what the what the requirements of their time would be, especially near the end. So we, we want to take and and see what they're from. So you don't want to set that meeting, or you want to set that meeting? Um, we'll we'll set the meeting, but I have the that later is, on is okay. item six, so we'll. All right. Um, We'll take that. Um, and I placed on the, the that that's all for the membership. We we haven't recommended anybody yet. I will as the forms come in, I'll get them out to everybody so that and then send the invite to um, our next meeting so that we can meet with the prospective members. So you're assuming that the by, you're going by the bylaw. Um, right now we'll go by the bylaw. Um, still having a conversation with John that if he, you know, feels that he wants to appoint for the full term. He may want to call town council. 
Mm, right. Yeah. 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 So, um, not sure how <laughs> how the next next item goes. Item four. I put review the impact of the pay as you throw to the FY25 budget. Um, I put in beyond um, just because trash is going to continue to be um, a budget item. But as we go from the FY25 budget into preparing FY26, because that preparation starts probably a mere four to five months from now. So we have to we have to see how it's going. Um, so when we go back to the special town meeting that we had, um, and and we look at the line item. So the trash line item is eight hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars in um, plus or minus a little bit in the budget. Um, when we voted a budget in May, we had enough money to cover it from the revenue sources that we had um, at the time. But the schools were funded at zero. In the special town meeting, the two schools, because of the other towns having voted, Townsend had to come in and pay that. So we have um, a minimum, a, about a hundred, a, a million dollar deficit at that point, because in order to keep that 822 in the budget, plus pay the million dollars for the, for the two schools, um, we didn't have enough revenue um, at, at that time. So we're, um, Um, so the way we were doing it, the rest of the town meeting was how do we get to cover the 822 um, in the budget. So the first line item was an additional $100,000 from ambulance receipts. So, and as we heard from the chief on town meeting four, there may not be that additional $100,000 in the ambulance receipts to cover next year. Um, the next couple of items. Yeah. Um, the next couple of items we had were adjusting um, little bits of money. Um, we Ross went and found the special town meeting articles that had a little money, and we transferred in about twenty-two thousand from them. And then there was about there was twenty-two thousand that we took out between the MIS, the IT, um, and the town administrator lines, the car. And then the last one was the 47,504, the um, cruisers, which we, is a lease, and it's gonna well, be the for the cruisers, the police cruisers. cruisers. So all of those re lines were reduced in order to hit the budget. So when we look at it, that, that's another sixty or seventy thousand dollars. But we still don't know whether we reduced it or not. We reduced it in FY25 because we stopped the lease. When we get to FY26, that full ninety-five thousand is going to be due due for that year. It's kind of like so. All we did is we delayed when we're going to start the full ninety-five thousand right. in the budget. So these are all the pieces we have to look at between you know what we did in special town meeting. Um, in August, and what we did special town meeting last year, we need to keep tabs on all of these pieces as we prepare the FY20, 26 budget um, and make sure we have all that. Well, I just think that everybody ought to realize in this coming year that there's not going to be a lot of money to spend. Right, and this year was supposed to it, I'm assuming you mean town employees. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, this year was also the line was hold expenses to zero percent, zero in, zero dollar mm -hmm. increases to the best of your ability, and only increase the lines where we would have things like a contract, um, a multi year contract, and the price of the contract was going up year over year, mm -hmm. as they do. Um, if there's special paper that is needed for certain forms, and there is in different places. If the cost of that paper is going up, then- Well, we I have, think that, we that they that. should be able to um, 
make it much more clear what they're really that's, that's those are the pieces. I think we, we, we're going to be looking. There's no more as, miscellaneous. There's no more miscellaneous. It, it, it's going to be details. When somebody says new equipment, it's a detail with the quotes and, right, and but, purchase orders right. or um, backing, backing documentation mm -hmm. um, to how we're getting to these numbers. Right. Uh, so going forward, we have to be a lot. There's going to be a lot tighter. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Sure. Yes. I'm confused. Yeah. You said, are you saying a zero increase for the 26 20, 25. It was the, it, as best they could, they were directed to do a zero dollar increase on their expense line. On the expenses. Okay. But that's a small portion of their, of the budget. Of the total budget. But... Right. Because when I looked at it, we've got a 10% in, well, not quite 10, 9% mm -hmm. increase. On the employee side, right now, part of that is the upper. Some of the upper positions are coming into the fully exactly this, this year. Exactly. So it looks like a nine percent increase, but it's it's an increase only in that we have to provide we have to have a revenue source to provide it at this point. It is not being funded by upper any longer. That's my point. Yeah. Okay, so, so I don't I don't care how it started. Right. I'm looking at. This is what right. the town and paid for the employees last year, yep. and this is what the town is paying for employees this year. Right, and it's close to a ten percent increase. Yes. So, so, so it, it doesn't make sense to me that we've got a ten percent increase on salaries, basically. Well, yeah, we, it looks that way. We, we we have an increase. We we have an increase. To the line item, it's not that we have a salary increase. It is um, now. No, I know you yeah, moving some money, but it, that's that's only part of it. Even that, if you if you take out those three positions, you it, still got an increase above two and a half percent. Right, because they, there's contracts with the employees that you, that are Black authorizing them. Exactly. Right. We, we can't. We have a contract, and we, we uh -huh. can't. That that's where we. Next time we have to negotiate that it um, that is a little better. A little better. It's kind of like a little better. Um, but right now we have a contract and we because there's another there's another um, piece that gets affected by that and that is the health insurance. Right now we know everybody doesn't avail themselves of the health insurance. Yeah, yep. health insurance is up by ten percent. Health insurance, they, the general liability insurances are up. All of those are increasing above the two and a half. We don't have a control right. over those. So it's kind of like, yes, the expenses are going up, but how do, how do you make up for the, for the items that are going up 10% where we don't have anything else to cut? By going zero dollars level funded on, um, on the lines, we're trying to hold, hold to it's a twenty twenty four percentage though. Right. Smaller number. But with with all of it, it you know, it, it's kinda of like paying it's for the it's not paying not for the energy, true. paying, you know, all of all those different items that we have that we're paying for, just like in our houses, the the increases are seen as significant. The town has those same pieces. So we have to um, we are attempting. I saw the I saw the dumpster in the in the parking lot, we have a capital plan item that is updating the lights in facilities so that our, and there's a, about a three year, three and a half year return on investment in the energy savings. Right. So they will pay for themselves. Um, but we did that with capital money. And so that will be lower energy costs mm -hmm. reflected in the FY25 budget or it could be, could be, um, a surplus in the energy lines in these buildings. It's not pretty. It is, it's, it's not oh, pretty. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry, Andrea? Oh, I'm muttering oh. to myself. It's okay. still tax dollars, no matter it, what. It, it is still tax dollars. It, it was just, you know, we, we took some of the tax dollars to invest in more energy efficient technology for the lights and in the long run it will save us once we get to the three and a half year it will save us but uh, from not having done the update we'll, we'll be i i don't disagree with that back to health care 
you know, yeah. health, the health care line item is going to increase considerably, but maybe even more than you think because it's very dependent on the uh, program within health care that the person contracts mm -hmm. for. So uh, hopefully, before we ever get around to estimating what um, health care is going to cost, uh, we should find out what program the employee is going to take for sure, because if they increase to a greater program, which they're allowed to do, yeah. um, we may not have the money to fund it. We we don't. We, we have to watch that. Well, the, there's Here. a contract, the employee contracts, too, say what percentage the town pays. It, there, there is, and, and but the if the employee is a single employee gets married now all of a sudden you've got you're paying for plus mm -hmm. one or right. family so, plus. so i mean so. we've we've what are we at now for a percentage that, that the town pays the town uh, cost i i don't know that number off the top of my head i mean it would be yeah. in the contracts but yeah. it's been a while since right. i've seen them yeah so um but this year also at the end of fy24 we did um, municipal transfer request and put money into the health care line. One of the problems you're going to have with that, as far as I can see, for this year, a lot of these problems were problems that were foreseen. Mm -hmm. The reserve fund is not to t it's not an adjunct to the budget. It's for unforeseen problems that come up and some of the sometimes we have had particularly the police chief used to do this mm -hmm. he would apply for something unexpected that happened in his department but things always unexpected happen this has got to be something over and above just mm -hmm. unexpected right yeah it, and again i think we put that on our list of activities to do so as I prepare the agenda for the next meeting, I'll add this on there. We talked about codifying some of these things. What is the reserve fund for? And get it out and and send it to department heads so that they know what they're responsible for and what the reserve fund is going to do. Um, so I think that that is on us a little bit to, oh, to yes. that, codify it and um, get it you know, get it out and, and actually publish it so that it's available on the town website, either um, under budgets or in, or we can cross link it and also post it on the finance committee. Um, so, so that, that is on us to try to try to do that and, and get that completed. Um, sorry, I, and I was, Starting on, on number four, we were going by the the um, page with show um, line and the impact. The other, so the rest of it was the 130 that were transferring out of reserve fund, or um, not reserve fund, we're transferring out of, um, sorry, kind of, um, um, I can't remember. The, yeah, the, I know it's kind of. Um, yeah, so it, so we're you know we we're taking the, the 130, um, and then like I say, the the 550 is the big portion of it that their expectations are. That's the revenue that the bag program will generate. Um, so those total when we total up all of those lines, that totals that. Um, line for um in within the health department for the the, the trash um, and again that's a one-year contract um and so as we go they need to be working on the next contract so that we can see what what the amount of the next next contract is and having a full year of the pay as you throw bags and see see where that leads, leads the next one. I have a question. 
Yeah. Who? I had an argument with a friend about this the other day. The Board of Health, I thought it was through recycling, but I'm not certain now. I, I got lost somehow in how that was being handled. Um, who buys the, the recycling bags in the first place? Board of Health? No, um, no, it sounded like Board of, Board of Health, would, they talked about the town investing $2,000, so I'd say it had to be the um, Board of Health was doing it. Because they're okay. The, yeah. So it's tax dollars. Um, therefore, I, I, they probably do it out of their um, enterprise fund that they have for the revolving um, on the recycle center. I, I, yeah. I, um, I thought that's what I, when I mentioned the recycling center, that's what I thought mm -hmm. at yeah. first, too. But I've been told. I I don't understand where the money is going to come from. That's all. Um, the money to buy, to purchase the bags? Or to purchase a bag. To purchase enough bags. Yeah. We're we talking about recycling or trash? The, it, trash. It's trash. The new purple bags. Right. Um, I mean, it, it, Andrea it, said recycling, and I thought that was... That had nothing to do with this bag problem. No, well, sometime in the past, um, we I think we, I, I don't know if we did it at town meeting or if it was just under the power of the Board of Health to do, but they purchased the extra bags, not from their budget, but from the money generated at the recycling center. Uh -huh. Because they were just overflow bags. They weren't day to day bags. Right. Yeah, right. yeah it wasn't the yeah, it wasn't the quantity that we're looking at. But they, uh, no. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think they changed it. They changed. It used to go through like Carla, all mm -hmm. right. Yeah. But and she would distribute the bags to the stores. Okay. But now the stores deal directly with the bag vendor. Right. But I don't know how the money goes back and forth and then comes back here. But there's a related question, and that mm -hmm. is the cost, the money from those overflow bags mm -hmm. was supposed to be dedicated to the budget for the recycling center. Okay, that and which it's, makes it's a revenue stream for the recycling center. Right. In addition to the what what so it. how are they going to split the money, so to speak, right. because you have, you know, a hundred bags that you mm -hmm. sell this right. week for regular yeah. bags, and then you mm -hmm. have overflow bags that the revenue for that is supposed to go to the recycling center expenses. But you said that the um, vendor I don't know uh, how interacts it. with the, yeah, I, I interacts. The vendor, the vendor Okay, when I worked at McNabb's, yeah. what she did was, and I, I don't know if it's changed or not, but she would put in an order to the vendor, and the mm -hmm. vendor would send her the bags, and then she would collect the money as right. she sold them. It, okay, and, and she's collecting face value, so there's no cost going to them. So oh, no, no, there's no cost. Going right, to so, them. so the cost has to be paid by the town at that point to the bag vendor. So it's, it's, it's a I, I don't know what the bookkeeping um, is, but what yeah. concerns me more is who's going to pay for the recycling center. Right. It, and right now, I believe the conversation was that they're going to still continue to use the same enterprise fund and, and not set up a separate enterprise fund and have to, and have to separate the, the bags. Um, eventually, my understanding is that they want to set up a separate fund that all bag money will, will flow into the Including curbside the overflow bag. Well, let me ask you about the overflow bag. Well, it's, again, there's no, yeah. no more overflow. There won't be any more overflow bag because you can put out as much trash as you want in those purple See, bags. See, that wasn't what I understood. What I understood was you still have a limit to how many bags you can put no. out. No limit on bags. No limit. You could put out six bags if you want to. So. 
And because they're all the same color, you, you don't differentiate. There's, there's no differentiation. Um, it's all it's real, one. really what it is, is based on the tonnage. And so when they did the original calculation for curbside pickup, pick up, it was 64 gallons per household would equate to X number of tons of trash. And then anything above that, you would have to buy a $3.50 bag for, figuring that was the calculation. Now, it's an unlimited number of $3.50. So it's, it, the, old, the, the curbside pickup of trash really has been eliminated and everything is considered, old, would look like overflow because it's all in purple bags. So you don't have a limit of only putting out two purple bags. Except for your wallet. Except, Except for your wallet, wallet that's yeah. correct. Yeah, that, that is always the, the big piece. Yeah, I just want to make sure that the recycle center is going to stay open. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, there is there is no change to the recycle center. Um, the, the bins that they do and the money they take in from what... Um, the more recycling, the more show off. Right. No, I know that, and, but, but I'm saying the recycle center to pay for what needs to be done for that. Right. That, that will uh, It'll continue. still come out of this big budget for bags. Yeah, I, I will confirm that it's only one account and it's gonna go into the same. I, I believe it's just, we, we didn't create a new enterprise account that, because we would have had to have done that at the special town meeting and voted in like we do in the annual town meeting and enterprise account that was specifically for that. So what well, I'm saying is- We weren't this, going for um, a pay for throw at the special town meeting, were we? No. No. So there's a big gap on planning right there. Right. So so after that, because of the implement on the implementation and the meetings, it's kind of like we haven't had a separate request or seen anything that they want to come up with a separate warrant article to um, to create an enterprise fund. So at this point, because we are we are we have an account um, that they can use. The only thing we might need to do is increase the dollars in that um, of that uh, enterprise fund. Uh, but we'll need, you know, again, we have to start seeing what the revenues are and taking a look at that. When does the state want proof that this is a revenue source of work? Um, How much time do we have? I, I think we have until the free cash certification. So we have which is children. around December, December, January time frame. But you can't get a free cash certification until you submitted your balance budget. Well, it, yeah. I think that it can be given yeah, it, to, but um, it, Free cash certification is going to be for FY24. This is an yeah. FY25 thing. So they they have asked us oh, to. for a projection of where in a balance of where we are with, with the revenue at that time. So that, right, so that they can look at it and, and identify it that um, we are on target. Um, and again, with the with the initial, um, I expect to see a huge spike. I mean, if if everybody buys just one roll of bags, which is five bags, which is five bags for seventeen dollars for for seventeen dollars. But so we're going to have that spike. But that said, if everybody only buys one one roll, that's fifteen thousand five hundred bags. For but not October first, not everybody's going to go. Not everybody's going to use them. There is, you know, they, if I think the target was 80, 85 percent um, use. So, but 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 again, not everybody's going to buy one roll. Some people are going to buy two, three, maybe four. Um, well, it seems to me they will have to buy more because five bags takes care of one month. If you right. only put out one bag, right? So I think. It, in yeah, yeah, so I mean, it, there's a lot of this, but um, again, that that production and that amount, if every if every one of the 3,100 homes is buying bags, that's the minimum you have to have with with one one roll being the only purchase. I think it's going to be more like two people are going to try to buy two rolls as a minimum. 
Um, and so that says that 30,000 bags have to be produced and ready and available for that October 1st date. So, I mean, I, I know it's just a numbers game, but we lived through COVID and toilet paper. This is true. It, it's oh, going to be a huge supply and demand in the beginning. Excuse me for interrupting. The um, where is uh, the money? This extra bags that we need to get. Mm -hmm. If if the th plan was still in place as before. Then McNabs would order that and then go get the money from. I don't. I I still, I I can't in my mind successfully yeah. follow the flow of money. Okay, uh, okay. Um, back back in the day, I worked with a billing department in when they were billing our service contracts, and they had what they called bobos bill on behalf of. Um, and so what happens is McNabs would call the manufacturer, say, I need bags. They would deliver bags to McNabs, and then a bill would come to Board of Health that said, I delivered this, this many bags to McNabs. Then McNabs would sell the bags at $17.50 a roll, when whatever the, the determination is, whether it's weekly, monthly, they would send their money and their sales information to Board of Health and say, I sold this many, here's the, here's the money for it. So then the revenue comes back from these vendors, it, it both okay, Hanford and okay. makes sense. Okay, so I have 17, uh, um, you know, I take the bags, and yep. expect to sell so many. What if I fall way short of that? Then and the money doesn't go to where it needs to go. What then? Well, that's that, waiting game, I guess. Yeah, it, it, exactly. So we need we need to try to sit with them. I, and there there is a team, and we and Carol Hossies is. Our representative on it, so we need to take a look closer at that um, and see where it is and see what the plans are for um, for monitoring it and reporting on costs and revenues. Um, because one of the things that the auditor had picked up on is we need to get better in our cash flow tracking. Using cash. You, yeah. Not, not using cash, but when we take cash in as a payment, yeah, I know. make sure it gets into the bank. How much money do we take in and how much yeah. does the bank? Yes, sir. It's Is kind that of a like, new position? No, it's we're not. Creating it's, another we're, position. we're not creating another position. We're just saying, what is the tracking mechanism the town has in place to make sure when I pay $30 at the recycling center, that they get my check for thirty dollars in the board of health and they deposit it into the into the account. The problem the, is using cash. The the problem is yeah, cash. How do you, how do you write so down? So why are we going to the, now? Okay, they pick up recycling. Yeah. There's no more bag limit. So why are we going to the recycling center? Well, the recycling center is your big item. Your washer dryer that oh, you want okay. to get rid of. All your right. propane tanks. Okay. The recycling center really isn't a recycling center for your household recycling. It's recycling for mattresses, it's mattresses, tires, yard, waste, like yard waste, and all of that. Yeah. They yes. Take care of all of that. Yeah. They take yard waste because they they have a big composting effort out. Mm -hmm. Right, and then after it composts, you can go pick up the yeah. composting material. Yeah. Yeah. There are, yeah. And bring it in. in credit so they they have a very good system but that that's why the recycling center is there it's not for the household recycling okay. but I, still, they still do take cash and i think mm -hmm. you have to pay cash when you go to McNabs to get the bags too McNabs is cash yes yeah. um, i don't know how i always get them at McNabs um, or here yes so, um, well it, and it should be yeah. cash because otherwise they're putting it through on the on a credit card credit card companies charges 
Right. So that's so percentage. Be, right. So, and checks bounce. Right. So so when I read the materials, Hannaford says they will take it on the Hannaford line. It said they will take credit cards or cash for the bags. So they probably have a good credit card exchange and, and charging. I'm sure they do. Um, you know, much more than a small business. A small business gets gets hit with a two and a half percent transaction fee and, and a fifty cent fee per transaction. So plus you get you, you get different accounts that things mm -hmm. go to in a right. big store. Right. And somebody I also heard and it, and I don't know how it will work here. Um, they have it in Rockport, and Rockport, if you buy at the stores, they charge tax on it because garbage bags are a taxable item. Oh. And so they probably have it just coded in in their systems as a as a. I'm sure they item. do. Yeah. So that that's a piece on you know how how it all goes. I don't know. Never having bought any overflow bags, I can't tell you how it works. How it works and whether oh, yeah. whether it's well, taxable, not taxable. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, before you said you didn't know the process for things coming in like this. In the past, now I'm not saying this is what they're doing now. I, I have no idea. But um, things like that and grant monies that come in and stuff are supposed to go to the treasurer. you know, And then they go on down to the account for, for noting that yeah. they're paying for by the uh, treasurer. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wondered, if you charged and took taxes, does that, that tax money go to us? Isn't that kind of then like that? No, that would, be, that would be like a state sales tax, and it would go to the state with... with oh, the, all right. Yeah. All right. Of, yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not, a, not a local tax. Okay, I just wondered how you accounted for how it would be accounted. Yeah, Thank it, you. yeah, that's 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 my piece. And again, not knowing whether whether they're taxed when you when you when you buy um, at either location, it's kind of I, I suspect it's just a flat seventeen fifty. But not having done it, it's it's a guess. But I will be buying my purple bags as soon as I can find them. Well, I I was told. And I believe they said it as the forum too. Was um, uh, the cost to the individual, other than the bank, the the that Hannaford and McNabb mm -hmm. charge us nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So they. But now we're causing them to do more work. They have to have an employee do some of this stuff, and there's a whole lot more volume. I would expect that they would charge us something. We'll we'll see how it goes. I I suspect they like the foot traffic. If you have to come in their store and you weren't really planning to come in their store, um, you, you 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 buy your bags and a steak when you leave. Yes, I understand. Yeah, that. or or you you pick up your Advil or or aspirin or you know. Right. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean foot traffic. Foot traffic for for businesses is is always, I, I would say, usually appreciated. It's kind of like um, if if it gets overwhelming for them, I'm sure they'll let you know. They'll let us, yeah, they'll let us know. And there will be addition, additional. See, the trouble uh, is, they will let us know, and I agree with that. Yeah. However, will we have any money to address what they let us know? See, <laughs> they they're just it just doesn't it go it, together it, well hmm. you know it doesn't you start at this point go to this point a little around here and this is wonderful it doesn't it doesn't form a nice solid plan right in my mind yep so it, and those sort of pieces i i haven't seen all the slides that um, they had presentations at the senior center and the one here at town hall. Um, they had multiple versions of the slide. This one Thursday again. Ah, okay. Here. Or um, the senior, senior center. center. Senior center, and then touch a truck. I think they're going to do some things up at the library. 
Oh, really? Mm -hmm. During that. Um, I did get the mailer in the mail today. It didn't have, it only had a few of the slides. Oh, information. Really? Yeah. Um, and on channel nine, I have seen a few of the slides rotate around mm -hmm. too, but I haven't, not sure I've seen the whole deck of them yet. Um, so, yeah, um, I wanted to throw it, in, throw it in here that we talk about it. It's something we're going to need to be to keep an eye on and, and be a part of and see see what um, what they are and where the where the revenues are. You know, it's kind of like um, how they're reporting how the expenses go. Um, the, like I say, from the audit committee side, um, the auditors had already told us that we need to tighten up on our um, on the cash flow process, mm -hmm. you know, how do how do we how do we know that we're getting into into the accounts everything that was that was paid? So that it's. Are they guaranteeing that they're going to have enough bags on hand? They said they are. Um, the, yeah, the um, uh, the manufacturer was in the September 11th, um, and he said they had enough bags mm -hmm. for things like he said his part. A truck here loaded with bags that when they ran out, they, 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 they like thirty thousand bags or something. It, and the thirty thousand bags to me would be would be the right number. That's about twice as many as you need to kick. And the smaller one, smaller bags don't come on until January. Until January, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of. So those, you know, those are the pieces. But we'll we'll see how it goes. And and again, that all of all of those numbers that. All of this is predicated on, I believe, an 80% participation in one and a half bags per house household. So I'm looking to see how we measure with 3,100 is the number that they've used. I have a stupid question. If it's what? one and a half bags, Yep. Is it one and a half small bags or one and a half big bags or one big bag and one small bag? You, because you really the price don't. that they generate is different. You, you, you really don't want me to show you, do you? No, I you don't. Just, <laughs> let, let, me, let me show you. I, I have not met with anybody yet. Um, but... Um, I put together a couple of couple of slides. Let me blow it up a little bit, and we'll just work on the top. Um, or let me go to the bag and a half. It's kind of like please, please. Yeah, it's kind of okay. So I'm I'm going to lose the titles. So if I look at one and a half bags, if I say thirty one hundred at three dollars and fifty cents. Um, the first column is weekly, quarterly, and then the nine month mm -hmm. value. So, um, and that's just if we use the full 3100. So then I calculated on what's the participation over here. If it's 75%, 80%, 85%, what are the dollars in the nine month um, realm that we would be getting? So, as they said, at one and a half on the large bags, now, I did not calculate any small bags into the 2025 fiscal year calculations. Um, but when I get to fiscal year 2026, I started, I, I haven't, I, I haven't put in, um, I want to take these 3,100 and drop that to say 2,500 and then here that would be 600 on the small bags, something like that. Um, and then we can start doing doing the math and seeing how it comes out um, in getting the total. So it's kind of, there, there's ways of doing it. I, I just started messing with it, but this is the this is the kind of piece that and numbers we want to see. And then we want to compare back as we, whether, you know, what's the calculation? Is it tonnage that Shaw's brings to the dump and then they tell us how much how much ton that was and we do the math back to how many bags that it pulled with, equates to. I don't um, believe it, we've ever gotten a scale out of the dump, so I don't think they can give you an act 
an actual accurate right so, you know so is it that we go out and do a do a sample count we we ride in the truck with them or ride on the back of the truck <laughs> so um and and just do a sample you know um we do Timberley Park, you know, one one trip, our first truck through Timberley Park one morning, and um, you know, on the western west in West Towns, and do it do it on another day, just to get an idea how many, you know. So we're going to know how many sold, so we're going to know the revenue. That's easy. Mm -hmm. Knowing how much we're throwing is going to be the variable, you know. So so there's there's the two halves of it. There's the revenue plus then the the other side of it. So um there's there's at least been some thought to it i i don't know how this compares to any anything that um uh, well i guess you just have to wait and see that yeah that the team's working with so i i have you know and i i was um i'll set up some time with carol and uh and go over it and find out when the next page of throw meeting is and see what they have thank you me um yeah. Last time and the only time I've ever been to the dump, a dump around here that takes, you know, of the waste from towns and all, or these big trucks, uh, they drove across the scale. I mean, we had to drive across the scale, then um, drive back across the scale on the way out mm -hmm. and pay for whatever was dumped. Right. Yep. So, and, and so therefore, oh, yeah, every, every truck that Charles takes to the dump gets weighed in and weighed back out. Right, because that's that's the tear, you know, that's that's the tear weight and, and or the tipping fees. And when we look at what we had present, been presented for the five year plans, they had the tipping fee listed individually. So they had the tipping fees, and so that that is extra work, and we have to see what if Charles will do that for us so that we can we can see the measures. You know, it's kind of like I say, we're gonna we're gonna know bank sales. Um, because we have the revenue numbers, we're not we're, the we're not see we won't see the other the other side of it. So that's that's the piece that um, I'll bring to um, to the pay as you throw team and, and see if if they have any plans for the measuring on the backside um, to see so that we can we can compare revenue revenues to to pretty much costs or, or bags bags being used. I think what you've got there is, is a very good place to start. Thank you. Yeah. It again, it, it's just one person's thought of thought of how do how do we measure it? And, and it's kind of like, and if we could actually measure the participation, then then we get into into that point of being able to um, see where we are. Do we have you know the seventy five percent participation, and how many bags are we we going to have to have and and what is a potential shortfall that may also help us with proving to the state um, that it is a viable revenue source and and a um, re reliable that it's going to hit the target that we say it uh, so that they can it will approve what we're doing um, because it, that's the piece it's kind of like i think it's more about matching the balanced budget that we're submitting for FY25 that they would be looking at is to make sure that the revenues we're projecting are, are on target um, and able to hit it. Speaking um, in that same vein, yeah. how far out of a balanced budget are we now? Well, you know? that, all, that, that all depends on what you what you you know it, it's kind of like because we took the hundred thousand the extra hundred thousand from ambulance receipts because we mm -hmm. decreased a couple of lines because we clawed back some of the special article money um and because we're moving um that hundred and thirty thousand um in sta sorry stabilization the stabilization money that's that's what we're at. we're out of it for FY25. We're only out of balance by the 550 that they're hoping is that 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 they're planning for revenue coming from the pay as you throw program. So does, does that answer it? That, yeah, thank you. That, 
Yeah, so that's where we are for FY25. For FY26, all of those things that I that I said, <laughs> the 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 um, 47.5 for the police cruisers is going back up to 95 next year. The 100,000, 100, the fire chief said it may not be there. Um, the 130 from stabilization is not going to be there. Those are these are non-recurring funds that we're bringing into this year, and we're using the stabilization fund as a loan this year, waiting for free cash certification because of the real estate sales that we had during FY24, and we know there should because of that there should be an excess of free cash that we can pay back the stabilization fund. That is the only reason why we had discussed it and, and did it. So uh, we need to, you know, just follow, follow on with them and make sure that when we have the free cash certification that we're out there with a, with a warrant article that says transfer to stabilization. And I'd love it to be more. Um, okay, so um, so that's a little bit of pay as you throw and, and FY25 budget. Um, I did send out um, the other pieces. Um, I sent minutes from uh, the special town meeting of November 14th of 2023. And I'll just touch on this. I don't want um, to go too too long on you. Okay. okay, so come back in here and open it up. Okay. Um, when we go back and look at what we did last November, um, in in the FY24 budget, um, the last town administrator allowed us to put in the full dollar value for the positions. So like on line seven, the community services coordinator was 66,000 and we reduced it to 10,000 because that difference of the 56,000 was our money paying in FY24. In FY25, we're gonna take that 66,628 up it by the, the salary position probably four four percent like every other salary line and we're putting in 20 this year so with that we still have approximately 40 47 and a half thousand dollars that we're going to have to bring back into the budget or know that it's it's not recurring revenue so we have to watch that as we move forward and really push for the five year so that we see when ARPA funds can no longer be used, which is December of uh, December 31st calendar of 26, which is the first half of FY27, that we can afford all of these lines. I don't know if we can afford all these lines. Well, we can afford them now. So some, some of them have already been brought in. So we, it, and this is where FY24 versus 25, the fire, the fire. EMS wages um, have been brought in fully in 2025. The police salary was fully brought in. Um, the and then so we we have to look at the lines. The other the other one um, that we this should yeah okay the uh, conservation. The, the, my understanding was and I don't see it. Um, so we must not have changed it. The Council on Aging, I believe, had a position that was still opera funded. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the community services? That's a community um, service one, isn't it? That community services coordinator moved from the Board of Selectmen into the senior center. Um, it, it, it may have a, I know, when we first put it in, it was ten thousand dollars coming from senior center, and then the rest of the salary was coming from. Yeah, but I um, think in, in this budget, it moved totally. It moved totally to council on aging. I might for be FY twenty five. That's yeah. what I remember. Yep, yeah, that's that's why I wanted to bring all of these 
pieces that are that are hard they could be hiding that we want to bring in and make sure um, that I, I keep questioning yeah. whether we need all these positions. I mean, we didn't have them before, mm -hmm. and right. they it, seem to get along just quite well. Well, and if you talk to the employees, um, there are some. I imagine quite a wide range of opinions on that very subject. It and and those those are the pieces. It when we when we start looking at the budget, or we look at FY twenty six, those those are the questions. Those are questions that we're really going to have to take a, take a look at. Mr. Chair, yeah, I mean, yep. if, if you don't mind, I yep. think that I think that what Jerry's maybe pointing to too is um, I, I feel the same you know and mm -hmm. and yeah you can look at the numbers and you guys can massage the numbers and do all the projections but our leaders our yeah. board of selectmen need to say what are our priorities mm -hmm. for the yeah. town right and, and I didn't hear that this year and I'm right. certainly hoping I'm going to hear it from the next board yeah. Yeah. and and because it, you know you can't treat everything equally because everything is not equal. It it is, it is not. It is kind of like and I think we we look at the town administrators that in in the history that we've had with town administrators, we had somebody that wanted to be really in control and, and do everything, and that transitioned to an interim. Then we got two years of somebody that had a legal background, and we were counting on. That legal background to do a little bit more of the legal work and not go to the town council all the time. So, um, but, well, but they well, can't be. No, but if, if, and, and this is the balance that I think we have. Well, they should have known better than do something. No, like that. Well, but, primary, but if you, if, the, if the you have The primary time. responsibility is the Board of Selectmen is budgeting. It, right, that right. is their first priority, yeah. right? And the, and the thing that they should be the most concerned about, because we look to them mm -hmm. to spend right. money wisely. Right. And and again, I I look at, at some of them, and and it was a transition when we when we transitioned from the the, the controlling town administrator. Um, he maybe didn't have as much of, of a legal background, so he had to depend heavily on town council which would drive up a town council bill well no so now hold on mm -hmm. because that's not true as part of the base town council charge unless they significantly change the contract mm -hmm. from when i was on there the base charge is that he's there for all kinds of things that you need on a day-to-day -day basis he is there for all that this this was in addition to it some of the some of so some, you're talking about litigation it, kinds of some things. of the lit litigation kinds of things that they didn't need. So now you're you're take, you're taking if you divide out a town administrator's hours, that the person prior didn't have the we we had higher legal bills and they've come down. Some of the legal bills transferred to the town administrator line because he was doing some that that litigation stuff, but he needed help on HR. HR is a very time consuming issue when once. Okay. For for codifying and, and things like that, yes. It's kind of like, but if you have it if some HR work can be very, very time consuming. So if you if you have that work to be done, not 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 the one time codifying, but the ongoing management. For 100 employees, you don't yeah. have much onboarding I, and exiting here. No, it's, it's not that so much. I had five employees in a call center. I spent 20% 20 per, 20 of my time with a party child. It's kind of like oh, that. Yeah. So, and, so, and that's what you're paying but, legal counsel for. But it's not, no, that's what you're paying HR for. You're not paying legal counsel to be HR. So in, in that case, we juggled a little money. Instead of upping the legal cost, it came over and, and did a charge. So all the all of the pieces that they were that are trying to be balanced, I can understand why some of the people, some of the positions were there. Are they needed there going forward? That those those are the questions that we have to answer. 
Um, so we'll, we'll see, you know, it, it, the skill set of each town administrator is different. And so we have to support the town administrator with, with what they need and what our expectations are of the work that they want, they want them to do. We said the, okay. um, the um, job description, I, I don't think, I don't know. I'm not sure that we hired Eric as first time lawyer. We hired we, him as an administrator. We, 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 hired, we hired him as an administrator and took advantage that he still had his law degree and he was still licensed. And so that we were able to do that and keep our legal bills down. It's kind of like, but again, that was time he was spending on the legal bills, you know, or for legal work. And if it's litigation mm -hmm. and he spent a good amount of his time on, it, it was some, then, yeah. then some of that litigation ended up coming out in our increase in our liability, our other insurance, I should say, not the. They'll, they'll, um, just far, squeezing the balloon. Do you know what I'm saying? If, and yes, and th and that's what we're doing. We're squeezing the balloon with the number of hours they have available, yeah. and and trying to stuff in there how much they can handle. I think I think so. That, to Jerry's point, I, I mean, to talk about HR from my perspective. Once they've come in and, as you said, quite mm -hmm. codified all of the, yeah. the stuff, we've got good. You know, we're in good shape in terms of our policies, mm -hmm. and you know, we're consistent across the board with handbooks. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. That is the kind of job that you typically would pay a consultant to do. It's yes. in and out, done. Right. All right. Yep. And then you hire somebody on an as needed basis mm -hmm. to right. handle other things. And then you don't right. have to worry about health insurance mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about right. all of the other. Yeah. So stuff. They, those, yeah, those. There's those. other ways to get to where you need to go. Right. Yeah. yeah. Regionalization mm -hmm. is one of them. Yeah. Yeah, so, it, it's kind of like so. Those those are. The, I'm just hoping that I start hearing those kinds of conversations. Yeah. I'm sure there will, will be conversations. I'm sure but, there will. Yeah, sure but, but again, I look, I look at this, and something that's sort of hidden from here is I look at the IT part of the budget, um, and that's that's. A little bit of a scary part moving forward is who's going to be giving direction to the contractor and be the interface to the contractor going forward. Kind of like what do you mean? Um, the interface had been a selectman before, well, so now you don't have anybody that. But we don't know that we won't get one that has that type of background. Exactly. I, 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 I have not. I, talked I think that we've had so much trouble with IT in various but, ways. That perhaps we what's really needed is to sit down and um, re-examine the contract, go over it, the, the, get a contract that fits our need, right. and then the board manages, not just an individual. An individual isn't supposed to do that because that gives them an overwhelming amount of power. Right. And well, and it's against don't... the charter. It's in violation of the charter for the selectmen to be involved in the day-to-day -day administration of the town. Exactly. And, and, so, and, and yeah. I mean, I have a real problem with with that. It's micromanaging. Well, it's, not yeah. the, well no, well, it's, it's, it's going over your, your TA. Your TA is supposed to be the one that's, that's administering right. the day-to-day -day stuff. Right. So the, that's just, I bring it up as a budget item. That we don't we don't have an IT director we don't have money in there we only have money to pay for equipment and a and, contract and what we end up getting back to and I think you're you're hinting at this what are our priorities what are, what are the priorities and how yeah. are we going to manage it it's kind of like in a budget going forward um, that when you look at the big picture when when you look at yeah. the big picture of the town do we have enough positions and people in positions to function as a town or um, Maybe you got to do a little shuffling. Maybe it is either shuffling. I I haven't been a, been able to sit down with Nelson yet um, and discuss what his background is. Me, you know, it's kind of like. But both selectmen that had things to do with IT, whether they were on the IT committee, 
they the liaison they they have all of their liaison pieces that they that they have um, so um, those those pieces are changing and both both people that were involved with the IT section are gone so it's now so it's going to and we're not going to have new selection in place until November 16th or the Monday probably the Monday following so I can say that that's Nelson's Right. Thing so I think he, he he, at this just, point he he needs to he needs to step up and and, and run it. it. It's kind of like, but does he know? You know, does, does he know all the pieces that that the people where where all the pieces are that are going to fall? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think he's probably too new to. I think run. that's kind of the the um. I um I I don't I like Nelson, and he seems to be very sharp and goes on. Mm -hmm. You do realize. If this is the first position as an administrative assistant he's ever had. He was the mm -hmm. head of a DPW before. Yeah. He is he is just now filling um things. I think he's learning and I think he's reading and I think he's studying and he's trying to get it all in. But you can only cram in so much in a short time. Right. Okay. And though we we have to Work and share our knowledge with him. I not, agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just it's, go it's after him. Expect him to do it. Yep. So, so again, that's one of the reasons why I want to sit down with him and and, yeah. and hit that and and see if if he's aware of what what things may have been going on and um, whether he's got plans for them or if he has to learn about them and make sure. They, they don't fall through the cracks. So, um, okay, sorry, there's been lots of conversation back. And some of it is, is the budget and beyond. Like I say, I don't know if that, you know, we, items items that we don't want to fall off the, off the table and we need to keep track of. I don't want them to be surprises. You're probably in the FY26 and all of a sudden you find you need a new position. Um, those are the kinds of things we want to try to bring out, work through, and um, make sure that we have answers for as, as we're going in. Um, and I know one of the things I talked about, I would like to see when we get grants and when we have new positions that are hired in the Board of Selectmen do it um, and, and do appointment, that if, there's, if, if we had a budget and had a position in a, in a certain number of positions and the salaries were set, when they hire in partly through the year that there is a document that's signed off that shows where the money's coming from to pay the position or the expense. Um, or when you, we take a grant, what follow on monies may need to be paid or what requirements, financial requirements they have on the town so that we have a signature and a copy. I think we take grants, but I don't know that there's a sign off and approval other than a voice vote that says we approve. Um, so I'd like, it, again, getting into writing and, and having traceability, those will be on my list of, of things that I'd like to work with the selectmen to uh, to follow up on and see that, see that reference. Okay, long. <laughs> Long pieces so far. Um, next item on the agenda setting next meeting date. Um, I didn't necessarily have anything planned. Um, I will say in my correspondence, and I had just mailed it out uh, so that we have a copy of it. Um, and so maybe I'll, I'll jump to seven and talk correspondence. We received a letter and an invitation from Brad Morgan to have a, an all towns um, financial summit with um, with the local rep representatives and senators as, as well as the three towns to start talking about the North Middlesex 2026 budget. Mm -hmm. um, what is and that? that's October 1st. What time? Uh, I, di I didn't read it. Oh, October. October 1st. Um, it, the time is in the the, the oh, yeah. letter and the email. Yeah. 
So this is going to be posted as a public meeting? It should be posted. It should be a public meeting. Yeah. What time um, is that? Um, just looking at it now. It's 6 p.m. At, uh, at North Middlesex. 6 p.m. Yeah, at the high school. Yep. Okay. And that's for all finance people and uh, open to the it, public. It's um, my understanding it was it was open to the public. But the invitation is to fin Palm and select. Them. The invitation was to select. Yeah, yeah, and it, and town administrators. Yeah. Uh, Margaret Scarsdale, John Cronin, um, and Andrew Nelson, and Mary from Ashby. Uh, and then the rest were. And Edward Kennedy. So, because we cross boundaries and representatives, I guess, yeah. or senators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think he's Peckle Senator and um, Cronin is ours and Ashby's. So, so that's one of the correspondence. The other, um, I will get out. Um, I only had a hard copy today. Um, when Ross was here on August 5th, they sent a letter to um, Superintendent Morgan that was talking about working within a tighter assessment increase mm -hmm. um, of only 3% next year. So it's kind of, so that may be what precipitated. Probably comes this, into that budget meeting that they're meeting. having. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and so I'll probably have to, it, there was a properties committee meeting that night. So I may have to take out with in, in Does it say what night that is? Um, um, Tuesday. Okay. So um, it does not say if there's going to be a remote dial into it mm -hmm. or not, but probably in the same location that the last one was. Um, so those, those were the two, you know, uh, two correspondence um, regarding the schools. Um, we did receive um, volunteer. So it's like I said, when we schedule our next meeting, I will invite them to the meeting. So okay. We, um, and discuss what our what the roles, you know, a little bit what the roles are, where, um, where we're at. And as we know, as we get to the end of the fiscal year, our our time commitment really goes up. So. They may not necessarily understand what the what the time requirement is, um, or whether it matches with the schedule that they may have. So, um, so now, next meeting. If we're going to do in two weeks, October first, we're going to be meeting there. Do we want it and going to the? Uh, School meeting, do we want to go for October 15th as our next meeting? I would think so. Um, keep it at six o'clock for now. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. 6 p.m. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, we'll start scheduling. Uh, hang on. The 15th. Or what did I say? October fifteenth. Um, I think we're I think we're fine. I don't think the selectmen can have a meeting that night <laughs> because that's the third Tuesday, okay. and that would be after the that second would, resignation. Right. So um, I will double check. I will ask for TKM and uh, see if there's no conflicts. And and if it is, then we'll go to meeting room two. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I I will double check on the 15th, but for now let's figure the 15th at six o'clock. Um, yep. And then when we hit October, then we'll then we'll start talking about our next meeting after that. I, I, at this point, I don't know how far out we need to go. And it's kind of like, but we'll, and again, the action for everybody, all the members, is to review. 
items one through three on our bylaws. And if you want to get and jump ahead with and be the teacher's pet, you can look at four, five, and six. And if we can get them all done in one whack, then we'll get it done and move on. These are the bylaws. These are the bylaws. Yeah. What day did you suggest for the next meeting? 6 p.m.? Um, October 15th. October 15th. OCT15. Thank you. Yep. Okay. PM. Thank you very much. Okay. And under that, that's it for meeting day. I'm only setting one. We'll, we'll move on. Um, I did just want to touch on the financial training reference documents. Um, um, not really. I, yeah. I had uh, received two links. Um, to two different files, which I was able to download. They don't sell the books anymore. Mm -hmm. And so now we have to print. And it's 169 pages no. per document. Um, so I'm going to speak with people in town hall and see if we want to print black and white on the machines here or if I take the files and go to Staples and get them printed up. But I still want to do the two copies. Um, Plus, if anybody needs it, we have the electronic copy for the MMA financial training document. So, I do believe we have some exp expense money that that could be spent. Yeah, we we still do under dues and subscriptions. I'd say that's a good place. You know, that's that's a place we could do it. And if we get them printed and bound um, at Staples, they'll 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 be able to stay together. <laughs> Because 169 pages is, you know, it's kind of like it's something you want to keep up, get bound and uh, keep together. Uh, yeah. And then we'll, then we'll have them in a library and available for, for. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Do you have people who volunteered to, you know, that you said you were going to mm -hmm. be interviewing? Yeah. Might want to send them a link. So that they can yeah. look at that part. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's we're we're starting to do that have and that's that's a piece that we want to build on the finance website is we need to go for different pieces of that. So not only the reference here, but references to the MMA sites and the and the uh, DOI or DLS. But those people you said you wanted to talk to. Talk to them, yeah. You know, yeah. so it might be mm -hmm. a good thing to just off to them. Yep. Yep. But I'll double check and see that I need the email addresses. Thank you. That's a good idea. Good idea. Okay. So I am ready to entertain a motion to adjourn at 7 30. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Thank you, Andrea. Um roll we'll call vote. Gerald Bazekas, yes. Andrea Wood, yes. Sam Grant, yes. John Hayes, yes. And I thank you all. We are now adjourned at 7.30.